Hello and welcome to Jason Sports Show live from Los Angeles, California. I'm Jason Garline. Once again, we're back and we are ready. And you know what? You know, baseball season is all in swing, and I love the Dodgers, and they're coming back to get the first place. But what I feel is the NBA has some unfinished business, and they're about to finish their business and start some new business with this year's Summer League. I'm here with my friend Chris. We're going to be discussing some NBA Summer League, maybe some other stuff. But uh, first, uh, I'll let Chris... Chris, uh, what do you think of Summer League so far? Well, I think it... Summer League really, it, it really never changes from year to year. It's just guys who are either rookies, second-year players, guys in the D League, guys trying to get into the league, all just working together to try and make it onto an NBA roster for training camp. As far as teams that have been successful, uh, Orlando, the Orlando Magic have done, have certainly done well. Uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder won the uh, title in the Orlando Summer League. And I know that the Clippers got off to a nice start in Vegas. Okay, okay. So, um, there's a lot of new stars about to stretch their stuff. I know on your favorite team, the Boston Celtics, uh, anyone, any standouts right now? Certainly Kelly Olynyk drafted 13th. Not a lot of people thought he was going to be really successful in the NBA. They just thought he was a nice college player, but... Uh, in Orlando, he really showed some nice skills, showed he could stretch out his shot to the three-point line, great in the pick-and-roll, pick-and-pop, has some nice post moves, uh, maybe needs to work on his rebounding a little bit, his defense, but overall I thought he put on a nice showing. That's good. Um, so I know there's been a lot of players. Uh, the biggest news right now is, is the start of the Vegas camp, so uh, kind of strange. Uh, usually they, they have all of the games at Vegas, right? Or is this the first year Orlando is included? Uh, no, usually Orlando is a staple. They usually do both. But I think this year was the first time they are splitting up the team, so they're having some teams compete in Orlando exclusively and other teams playing only in Vegas. Okay, so uh, what, do, what, do you have, what, do you, what do you make of Oklahoma City winning Summer League in the East? I mean... Oklahoma City is not definitely not a lottery team. You you expect the the lottery team uh, like Orlando to win. What do you what do you make of Oklahoma City winning? Well, certainly they 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 didn't they definitely had a roster that had some nice players. Reggie Jackson, who is going to be playing uh, in his third season next year, he set the record for most points with thirty five. I think yesterday, maybe maybe day. At, maybe two days ago. Yeah. And then obviously uh, Jeremy Lamb, who was a second year player. Uh, he didn't really have a lot of a lot of play time for the Thunder, but he did get a lot of D League D League run and he certainly impressed there, so I wasn't surprised to see him put up big numbers, even hit a game winning shot in Orlando. And then you've got uh, Steven Adams, their rookie who was drafted in the lottery, who um, showed that he has some potential to be a serv serviceable center for them down the line. Okay, um and the a game just went final. Uh, the Los Angeles Clippers beat the Atlanta Hawks 90 to 83. Uh, Reggie Bullock for the Clippers, a surprising draft pick for the Clippers. Not really surprising, but he's a guy that probably will start for the Clippers. Um, do you think he's a starter if he performs well enough in summer league, or do you think they have to hold him off on the bench? Well, I think Doc Rivers. He he's the kind of player that Doc Rivers likes. He's a three and D guy. He can he can shoot it from the outside and he can guard multiple positions. So I think there's certainly a chance for him to prove himself once training camp starts for the starting spot. But I think he's gonna have to compete with guys like JJ Redick, who is an elite three point shooter, and then guys like Jared Dudley, who can shoot and play defense a little. But I wouldn't say it's out of the question that uh, Doc would be willing to give Bullock a start. Okay, so uh, assuming. So we're, we're, we're that, with that being said, we're assuming that Reddick and Deadly are the, the starting the, are the starting two and threes. Uh yes. Okay, so okay, so that that gives uh, Clipper fans the look at Paul, Reddick, Deadly, not in that order, but uh, with also with Griffin and Jordan for the starting five, correct? Yes. Okay, so 
We'll move on to other teams here. Uh, Victor, Victor Orendipo. Is he the real deal, or is he going to be the next non-effective guard in the NBA? Well, I think right now his, his projection is to be Tony Allen, who okay. has certainly found success in the NBA, especially with Memphis. Uh, being a great defensive guard, arguably the best defensive guard in the league, made first-team All-NBA defense this year. Um, he certainly got better offensive skills than Allen has shown. He, In the summer league, he showed that he has an outside shot. He showed that he has some ball-handling skills. He even put up a couple nice uh, or some nice assist numbers in a couple games. So I think he's definitely going to be a productive player. Um a star, I, I can't say that for sure right now, but I expect to see him on a couple All NBA defenses lists in uh, in future years. Okay, so okay, so he's not gonna be competing for Rookie of the Year or anything, you're saying? Uh, saying. I don't think that's out of the question. I think in a class like this where there was no standout prospect, okay. I, I it was certainly um, unknown who was gonna go number one. I mean, some projections and some uh, mock drafts had Nerlens Noel, Ben McLemore as your top two. But I think uh, Oladipo really caught the attention of uh, GMs around the league, and obviously he went number two overall. So uh, he's certainly going to be in the discussion. Do I think he will win? Uh, I think I think he, based on his summer league performance, I think he'd have to be the favorite. So I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Oladipo win. Okay, so we're reaching the ending mark. But uh, are there any other rookies you'd like to point out right now that's been performing pretty well? Well, I think Anthony Bennett is really going to be kind of the litmus test for how the Cavaliers do this year. You, uh, they picked up Earl Clark, Andrew Bynum. Obviously, you have Verja coming back from injury. Uh, Jarrett, oh, forgot Jarrett Jack. Great point. Backup point guard to uh, star Kyrie Irving. So the way Bennett fits in, that he's projected to be a stretch four or power three, and I think they are going to have to play more at the three with Tristan Thompson and Earl Clark uh, are going to be at the four spot. So, uh, depending on how his ability to guard small forwards in the NBA as well as his ability to uh, create offense off pick and rolls with Irving and Jack is really going to determine how well the Cavaliers do next year and whether or not they make the playoffs. Okay. And um, well, this is kind of an out-of-left-field question, but um, the NBA is a, is a league about playing your home court and Whenever every night your home fans expect you to win on your home court, what team do you think has the best home court advantage right now in the NBA? What team has the best fans, last arena, best place to play? It's, it's tough. I'd have to say it's probably a tie between uh, Golden State and Oklahoma City for the same reason, and that is their fans throughout the entire game are cheering very loudly. You know, very supportive, very emotional about their respective teams. Whereas in other uh, other arenas, you'll you'll most often hear fans uh, really get into it when their team is playing well. I think if the Thunder are down 10, if the Warriors are down 10, their fans are going to be going crazy because they love their basketball, they love their teams, and they love their stars, their respective stars in Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry. Uh, they'll just elaborate a little more on those two teams. With this Bay Area, you have the, the the you have a split between fans in certain sports. In football, you of course you have the Raiders and the 49ers, and in baseball you have the Athletics and the Giants. But those two teams in two in those two respective sports, which I'm talking about, is the Warriors and the Sharks. Those two teams really unite the Bay Area into one and make all driving force those loud fans. Uh, cheer for those guys and when you think of Oklahoma City a city that held on to the Hornets and gave them the support they needed to continue playing on after Hurricane Katrina hit and so after they left um, after they left uh, o Oklahoma City oh the NBA was proven enough to buy Oklahoma City that they deserved it they, they deserved the team so I think when Oklahoma City came to, uh, when the Thunder came to Oklahoma City, or rather the Sonics came to Oklahoma City, they were greeted with very much positive reinforcements and promised to bring the Thunder every single night, <laughs> if you will, uh, to that to uh, uh, Chesapeake Big Arena. And I don't think, as long as those fans stay together, I don't think 
the Thunder are. For, I don't think the, I don't think the NBA is ever going to take out the Thunder from Oklahoma City. So with that, I'm going to close the show. Thank you for listening. All of more shows uh, coming up within the next three weeks. Of course, you'll hear some shows with Chris. I also have a lot of other guys here at USC that a lot of, bring a lot, bring a lot of uh, perspectives of sports. So I'm excited. I'm excited about that. So uh, until then, uh, we'll see you guys later.